Octarians are the main villains in the Splatoon series, severed octopus arms that think and attack on their own. But did you know that this is based on the real life biology of the octopus brain? Or what we know of it anyway. Just a quick semantic thing before we get started, an octopus's limbs are technically called arms, not tentacles. I'm gonna use that term for the most part, although when talking about octolings, for example, it might be confusing if I say arms. So I might say tentacles for clarity, because being clear is more important than the technical definition in this case. There's a spider on the ceiling. How you doing, buddy? I'm gonna let him do his thing. So you may have heard that octopuses are very intelligent creatures, opening jars, using coconut shells as portable armor, stealing a photographer's camera and then taking pictures of him. Yes, that's a real thing that happened. But the octopus brain, or brains doesn't quite work the same way as ours. Octopuses have about 500 million neurons, which is about the same as a dog. But unlike a dog, most of the octopus's neurons are not in one central brain, they're in the arms. As a result, each of those arms has the ability to think for itself, at least in simple ways like coordinating their movement and reacting to sensations and threats and simple problem solving. In Splatoon, the more tentacles an Octarian has, the smarter it is and the more difficult to defeat, and tentacle-based Octarians in general are more simple-minded than Octolings, representing how, yes, octopus arms have mini brains or something. A brain is one of those things that you'd think we have a very clear definition of. You know, it's the pink lumpy thing in your head that has the thoughts in it. But the octopus shows how this definition can be kind of fuzzy, with some scientists saying that octopuses have nine brains, while others say that they have just one brain and eight very clever arms. And still others say that they have a central brain and eight mini brains. No matter what you call them, these mini brains in the arms can act on their own without consulting the central brain first, which is an evolutionary advantage. Eight arms that can bend in limitless ways, each with over 200 suckers. That's a lot of information for one brain to deal with, so this decentralized thinking allows the octopus to think and react faster. And that's all well and good, but the octarians are literal severed octopus arms, completely detached from the main body and and brain. So the question is, if a real octopus arm was cut off from the main body, could it still think for itself? And the answer is yes, thanks to some kind of creepy research studies that did just that. For example, this 1963 study cut off an octopus's arm and nailed it to a block of wood, submerged it in seawater, and shocked it with electricity. This is like the definition of mad scientist. Even while amputated, the suckers were grasping at whatever they could, and when it was shocked or pricked with a needle, the arm would flinch or bend or try to move away. A similar study in 2001 found that a severed arm will extend in response to stimulus almost identically to the way that an intact octopus would, suggesting that the basic basic motor program for voluntary movement is embedded within the neural circuitry of the arm itself. It says voluntary, which to me suggests that the arms are literally making choices for themselves, even if they're very simple choices like get away from the thing that's hurting me. Most other articles talk about reflex responses, so I thought it was interesting that this one said voluntary. The study's behind a paywall, so I can't really read the details, but it sounds fascinating. A 2013 study examined a bunch of severed arms. Some arms were suspended vertically and others were laid out horizontally. This sounds like such a terrifying science lab. Like, just imagine walking into this lab. All the arms would bend or curl up when they were pinched or had acid thrown on them. Their research provided some of the first evidence that octopus arms have nociceptors, which are how our bodies perceive pain. So these tortured arms were in fact in pain. Thanks, science. The study also does mention some new regulations to minimize the pain and suffering of laboratory octopuses. So that's nice. Simple-minded, sure, but the arms are alive and have the capacity to respond to threats, kind of like the weaker Octarians. But of course, arms can't survive for long on their own. They are lacking 
basic things like the digestive system and other necessary functions, so they'll go limp eventually. But some of the arms in these experiments were responsive for up to three hours. That's still pretty impressive. It's better than my arm could do. Can you imagine if a severed human arm could just keep on doing its thing without the body? That'd be so creepy. <laughs> According to the Splatoon art book, Octarians are created by cutting a tentacle from their host. And in real life, octopuses can regrow their arms. And sometimes they'll just drop one of their arms as a decoy while they get away from a threat. So it's a really interesting idea, this thought of Splatoon Octos just perpetually cutting off more and more limbs to create soldiers for the Octarian army. That's such a creative idea and with such a clear inspiration drawn from the biology of a real-life octopus. And as recently as 2020, we still have scientists saying that the brain of an octopus is like a black box to us, really. There's still so much more to learn. So I would definitely keep an eye out for more exciting octopus news as we continue to learn more and more about these creatures. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to my channel or leaving a comment or a like. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.